going to pass to our first speaker, um, Owen. So Owen Pierce is from First Bangor Venture Unit. He's been in the movement seven years and uh, is now a National Youth Council and State Youth Council member. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about his reflections from his time in Mongolia and China. So please welcome Owen. Good day, mate. Good day, mate. So that was a group of Mongolian kids saying good day, mate. So we had one of the leaders pretty much teach them how to say good day, mate. Anyway, good evening, everyone. At the end of July and start of August, I had the opportunity to travel to Mongolia and China with 67 other scouts and venturers from all over Australia. We participated in the 31st Australian Pacific, oh, sorry, Asian Pacific Regional Jamboree. We set off on the 21st of July, arriving as a whole contingent in Beijing on the 22nd. This is where we spent three days exploring China, visiting iconic sites such as the Great Wall of China, the Forbidden City, and the Tiananmen Square. Over the next two days, we spent 27 hours on a train to Mongolia before taking advantage of one last night in a hotel, then arriving at the Jamboree site. This is where we met people from t over 20 different countries and spent six days embracing the landscape and various cultures displayed at the Jamboree. After the Jamboree concluded, we had the chance to stay two nights with a host family. This was a place in Yudabatar, and that's the capital of Mongolia, if you didn't know. After this, it was time to say goodbye, and we took the next two days to travel home. So I know that's 17 days pretty much summed up in about two minutes. Sorry, minute, not even two minutes. <laughs> but when I was asked, I was first asked to present this speech tonight to the Commissioner's Conference and was told it had to be memorable. And so I asked for tips on how to make it that way. And Lloyd said, to make a speech memorable, the person needs to be confident. Talk about things that were, are relatable and that something that I'm passionate about. That is what I'm going to talk about. This is why tonight I'm not going to talk about what we actually did whilst we were in Mongolia and China, but more the effect on me on a personal level. I'd only travelled to New Zealand without my family before, and that's hardly a different country. So... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Randall. So you can just imagine how different travelling to... Mongolia was. I lived out experiences that some people could only dream of and that was a real honour. I have made long li sorry, lifelong friendships bloom over five days and met self-sufficient bilingual 12 year olds. I have had meals in people's living rooms that doubled, doubled as a restaurant. Eden at underground pizza huts, bargained in five-storey indoor market buildings, boarded chairlifts to the top of the Great Wall of China, buried a deflated kangaroo at the top of a small Mongolian mountain, <laughs> and fed Vegemite to other internationals. Simple things, but yet many of you couldn't even say that you've done one of these. So my expectations compared to my reality on the way over to China, I couldn't stop thinking about what it would be like. I expected to be lost in a crowd, not be able to see more than 10 metres in front of me, and I thought the weather was going to be gloomy and miserable. This is compared to the reality of being hit by an instant sweat when we went outside from the airport. Outside, it was muggy. It was a muggy heat. And it was, the stench was similar to when you go to a drop toilet. But also, to my surprise, the sky was blue. There wasn't heaps of traffic or that many people walking around. It was the sheer number of mopeds and push bikes that made up for the lack of traffic. There were bikes everywhere. There would be hundreds lined up along pathways 
waiting for someone to hire them. Now, all my expectations for Mongolia were met. Rolling hills, animals everywhere, and friendly people. But what I didn't expect was the housing. Only a few housings were actually multi-storey. Instead, 90% of the population in Mongolia is living in miles upon miles of colourful houses joined by dirt roads. When you looked out to the houses, it nearly looked like there was a crazy hair dye and there was just people walking around except that they weren't moving. In Mongolia, there were a lot of animals all over the place. You could be driving down the road and there'd be a cow, a camel or a horse just grazing by the side of the road. The traditional dress is mainly bright colours with girls wearing dresses and boys pants. The girls would go also wear very long necklaces and earrings. There were lots of girls around the Jamboree site as well. These, they are used as places that you went to meet people or have a meeting with your group. Although traditionally they are Mongolian houses. A lot of Mongolian kids spoke English, but there were only a very few that actually were fluent. My host family was relatively good, but it was going to another country, sorry, if you're going to another country, I would highly suggest using Google Translate. Something that was really surprising was, so it's a bit mixed up, so not legal age, but the age that people can easily get their hands on alcohol is 13 and for cigarettes it's only 10 which is honestly disgusting it disgusts me as there were so many young people that were smoking but something that was quite different to Australia is the food we had an assortment of food in and the meals that we could work out exactly what we were eating included beef soup chicken and rice, dumplings and rice porridge. Best part was it all tasted so good. I have been asked multiple times, what was the highlight of your trip? Or what was your favorite part? I've struggled to answer these, these questions up until it came to sit down and write this speech. It was when I was going through the photos for this video and was invited by a newfound friend to join her and her, her group at Vic Gathering. That was when I realised the best part of the whole trip. It was the people, the friendships. As I'm, I am sure, those of you that have been on a jamboree would agree, the trip just wouldn't have been the same without the people. There wouldn't have been the laughter, the jokes, the games played, or even the feeling of security. During the whole trip, I had opportunities to make friends with people not only from all over Australia, but from all over the world. There is nothing more satisfying than sitting at a ceremony and watching the Australians and the Brits make the most of their spare time by taking part in some traditional Mongolian wrestling. We were just participating in some good old rivalry, but before we knew it, we would have to say goodbye to these people that we had just become mates with. I can't describe the feeling leaving, knowing that most of you, most of you are going to ever speak to these people again is through social media. If any of you have the opportunity to travel to another country, or that's as a line leader or a contingent leader, or just as a service leader, I highly, or even as, for the young people in this room. If you get a chance to go to a moot, a venture, take it, I beg you, please, with open arms. It'll be an experience that you'll never forget. You'll never forget the people, the places, or the atmosphere. It was truly an amazing experience. This is the best attempt, sorry, this is my best attempt of expressing how much the trip changed my views and affected me on a personal level. Thank you.